Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to make this honeycomb floral tumbler. Let's not waste any time and let's jump right in. First things first, let me show you how to mold these tumbler tuxedos from the Amy's Make Everything. These specific pieces are not the ones I used on the tumbler for the tutorial. I didn't film me making those because I it was my first time and I ended up warping them a little bit. So I figured out how to do them better and that's what I'm doing here. So with the tumbler you're going to be using for this project, and before you put anything on it, you'll go ahead and mold your pieces to it. To do this, you'll just want to take your heat gun and heat up the steel for about 10-15 seconds. You don't want to get it too hot to where it completely melts this or to where you touch it and you burn yourself. You just want it warm enough that it starts to make these pieces a little pliable. So you'll just want to keep repeating this process. You can bend it a little bit once it gets a little bit softer like I'm doing here. With the edges, I couldn't get them to lay down how I wanted, so I did heat these up just a little bit by applying heat directly to them. If you find yourself having to apply heat directly, just be very careful not to apply too much too fast because they will warp. You want to repeat this process until all the pieces are formed and then you will set them aside for later use. Going in with some black spray paint, I applied it to this tumbler and let it dry and then I'm using the epoxy method to apply my glitter. This glitter here is from PDB Creative Studio. It is called Stinger and it is from their last art box. And I'm going to apply this all over the tumbler. Once you're done glittering, you'll go ahead and wait for your adhesive to dry and then you'll want to epoxy this tumbler until completely smooth. And while you're waiting for this to go ahead and dry, we'll move on to the next steps and getting these ready to go. So these are the forms that I'm actually using on the tumbler. You can see how I kind of warped them a little bit. They were bigger sheets, but I cut them down to try to salvage them as good as I can. I took them outside, spray painted them, and then let them dry. And now I'm going in with some halo powder from PDB and this glitter glue from Adhesive Apothecary which has this really pretty gold shimmer in it. The name of this glue is called Celestial Luster Be Loved, and it was also an exclusive to the PDB art box. So what I'm doing is taking this adhesive and adding a little bit of the halo powder to it. I'm just gonna mix these two together, and then I'm gonna apply it to my tumbler lid, which is also painted black. As you can see, these two products made this beautiful gold shimmer, and it really pops on this black surface. After applying this all over the lid, I decided I didn't like the streaky marks that I could see. So I'm gonna go ahead and just dab this all over with my brush, just dab, 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 and it breaks up those streaky lines. Once done, set aside and let it dry. In this next clip, I'm gonna show you how I epoxy this lid. So one of my turners is from the Bowen and I have the pen chuck, and this is what this is, this little contraption. I am using the pen chuck to turn my lid. And I think any pen chuck would work if you had one on hand. This is just super, super easy way to do it. When your tumbler is ready and smooth, you'll want to go ahead and take it outside. And I do a layer of black spray paint. And then I top that with a layer of white, letting them dry in between. As you can see, my paint job isn't uniform, but that's okay because I wanted a distressed look for this tumbler. And that's what we're going to do now is start distressing this tumbler with some acetone. I picked up this bottle of acetone from Walmart. It was only a couple bucks, and then you just need some paper towels. How I distress my cups is I use the acetone and the paper towel to kind of map out where I want my glitter to show through. 
This doesn't take a lot of pressure or effort to do. You just want to lightly wipe away the areas that you want the glitter to show through, like I said, and just go around the tumbler, making sure not to take off too much because I'm gonna go in next with some alcohol and really clean up these areas and start really defining the look of this. I also like to do all around the bottom rim. Sometimes I'll do the top of the rim as well, but for this one I just did around the bottom. Now with the clean paper towel, I'm going in with 91% rubbing alcohol. And this does take a little more effort. You need to really kind of push down into that paint to get it to, to come off. I'm going to continue to do this all the way around the tumbler with each of these areas that I have previously distressed with the acetone. Now that I have this cleaned up to my liking, I'm going to go ahead and move on to applying the tumbler tuxedos to my tumbler. To do this, I use liquid fusion is my preferred way to apply them. This does take a while to dry, so I would suggest if you're trying to do this in a hurry to go ahead and use something like UV resin. But me, I'm not a huge fan of UV resin, so that's why I am using this liquid fusion. Now that I have it in place, I'm just using a little bit of pressure to kind of help adhere it. And I'm also adding a little extra glue in places that I can see aren't sticking as well. To make sure this piece doesn't move around while I'm working with the other piece, I'm gonna go ahead and use some masking tape and tape this down, and I am gonna leave this until that glue cures. For this piece, I decided to try to put the glue down on the tumbler first, instead of trying to put it on the tumbler tuxedo itself. And I didn't really find one way to be superior to the other. After watching this video, you can decide which way you wanna go with. Um, I feel like this way I used a lot more glue I didn't really have to touch up as much. So there is that. And then I am also gonna tape this down and let it, the glue completely cure. For liquid fusion, the cure time is 24 hours. So after your glue or whatever adhesive you're using cures, then you can move on to the next step. Going in with Sun Glow from PDB Creative Studio and also a little bit of that glitter glue from Adhesive Apothecary. I'm just mixing the two inside of a medicine cup. With a little silicone tool, I'm going to go ahead and take this mixture and start applying it inside of my honeycomb pieces. I'm 
I'm going to go around the tumbler and add this glitter mixture into random sections of the honeycomb. You could also use UV resin and this glitter for this step as well. But like I said, I do not care for UV resin at all. So I'm using this glue and it sets up quick. The dry time isn't that long. So this step actually went pretty quickly. When you're done filling in your honeycomb, you'll go ahead and let this dry. And once dry, you'll go ahead and add a layer of epoxy. My epoxy is now dry and I am able to move on to the next step, which is my decals. Since we are coming into the fall season, I decided to use some fall colored flowers. These are from Gracefully Created. They are the floral elements and the name is Terracotta. I decided to go with the two medium sized pieces on the sheet. And here I am just cutting it out and placing them on the tumbler. If you decide to use a mason jar style tumbler or anything with a curve, just be mindful of where you're placing these decals at. One of the good things, like one of my favorite things actually about these decals from Gracefully Created is they are removable. So if you're having problems with placing these, they are very easy to, you know, peel up and reposition. When placing these on a curved cup, what I like to do is just make sure that the colored part of the decal is smooth because this clear areas, you can go ahead and cut these completely off. I do go around and kind of snip at them to help these lay flat, but as you'll see here soon, I will be going around with my X-Acto knife and cutting off all those clear areas where there may be some wrinkles or bubbles, any kind of imperfection from laying these down. Definitely take your time with this. Just make sure that those colored parts are laying as flat as you can possibly get them and we'll go ahead and take care of those pesky wrinkles here in just a second. When you're going in with your X-Acto knife to cut out these clear areas with the wrinkles, be very careful not to push too hard. 
This really doesn't take a lot of pressure to do. For small little areas, I'll go ahead and cut it and then I'll take my weeding tool to pick out those little pieces that I just cut away. When I'm done messing with this one, I'll go ahead and move on to the next decal. Placing this decal won't be as strenuous because this is a flat area, there is no curves. So if you're doing this exact tumbler style, this decal won't give you as many problems. I think I just cut off the excess on the bottom for this one and then maybe one area and that was it. I'm gonna go ahead and look over everything, make sure I got it all flat and perfect, as can be anyway. And then I'm gonna go ahead and epoxy, just doing one layer of epoxy. After staring at the lid, I decided to go ahead and add one of these floral decals to it. I'm going to place it right over that straw hole and then <laughs> use my X-Acto knife to carve out the middle. You can feel it and I'm kind of pressing down to indent it a little bit and then just very carefully taking my X-Acto knife and going around and cutting out the middle. And then what you'll want to do is tilt your knife and do one more pass. This will kind of leave a gap in between the straw hole and the decal so that way when you epoxy it it will have a nice seal. I did one layer of epoxy on this before moving on to the next step, which is using this gold pen, I am going to start adding some gold dots all over the tumbler and also on the lid around the flower. Since this is a distressed tumbler, I wasn't too particular with making sure my dots were uniform. I did different sizes, um, some of them weren't perfect circles. It's kind of just I don't want to say a mess, but it's a mess. <laughs> it's just a beautiful mess. It all comes together so well. Once you're done adding all your dots, you'll go ahead and finish this tumbler off. I usually do two coats of epoxy over my decals, so I'm going to go ahead and do one more layer of epoxy to finish this tumbler. Once your tumbler is done, we're going to go ahead and add the final little touches, which are gluing on these cute little bee charms. These came in the PDB art box, but I'm sure you can find some similar on Amazon or maybe even Timu, eBay. I don't know, anywhere that sells little charms will probably have bee ones. And of course, I'm using Liquid Fusion to apply these bees. I'm gonna go ahead and apply glue to the backside, the wings, and then around the edges as best as I can.
Once I get my B placed, I'm gonna go ahead and use some tape to hold it in place, just like I did with the Tumblr tuxedo. After adding this bee, I decided I only wanted to add one more to the lid. You can definitely add as many bees as you'd like. I just didn't want to take away from everything else that's going on on the tumbler. Since this bee on top sits flat, there's no need to tape it down. Once your bees are completely dry, your tumbler will be 100% completely done. Yay! And here it is, all finished. I really love how it turned out. I think it's absolutely stunning. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. And don't forget to check down in the description box for discount codes on some of these items and also a link to my Facebook group. If you make this cup, I'd love to see how it turns out. Okay, bye!